click the bell icon to get latest videos from ekida hello friends welcome to ekida today we see a new chapter that is called as network functions and the very first topic is the introduction of network functions so let us see what exactly it is so you can see here i have considered a one port network now what is a one port network now generally a one port network has a pair of terminals where you can attach the input so a pair of terminals it is connected to energy source now no network can work without energy source so we know that so this pair is connected to an energy source and that energy source is called as driving force for the particular network because it drives that network and these pair of terminals which are in blue color terminals means they are some wires or conductors so these pairs of or these pair of terminals they are called as driving point of the network so these pairs are called as driving point and they are connected to some kind of energy source and this is true for this one port network there can be two port three port or n port network majorly we deal with two port networks now we consider a two port network now as seen here a two port network has two pairs of terminals one is you can see one one dash another is two two dash and so this port one one dash is connected to driving force now you consider a two port network now two port means it should have four terminals so this is one one dash means two and two two dash means total it is four that is two pairs of terminals now for this two port network this port one one dash now you consider a two port network now two port means it should have two pairs of terminals because for one port network it has one pair of terminals so you can see there are two pairs of terminals this can be called as input pair this can be called as output pair so this one one dash this one one dash port is connected to a driving force which drives the circuit and two two dash port is connected to some load or output now generally we call load as output in general we call this driving force as input now we will see what are the types of network functions first of all why we saw what is one port and two port because they will be required to study now when you see the types of network functions there are major two types one is transform impedance another is transfer function these are two types or you can see two cases which are to be studied under network functions so we will study what is transform impedance or transform admittance so you can see here transform impedance at a particular port is the ratio of voltage transform to current transform for a network in zero state now zero state means it has no initial conditions so transform impedance means there has to be some impedance which is z of s all is in s domain because it is transformed it is not in time domain it is in s domain as we are used to do it in laplace so z of s it's called as v of s upon i of s because impedance is voltage upon current so in s domain also it is voltage transformed divided by current transform that's why it is written as ratio of voltage transform to current transform for example if you refer to this particular two port network and if you want to get the input impedance which is transformed impedance at port number 1 you will need transform voltage at this port number 1 as well as transformed current both in s domain for this port number 1 and we can call this as z11 you can also calculate z22 which will be v2 upon i2 all in s domain so as we know what is transform impedance which is ratio of voltage upon current we similarly have transform impedance or admittance which is current upon voltage exactly opposite of impedance so it is current divided by voltage so it is going to be 1 upon z which is reciprocal of this now there is one important condition that voltage transform or current transform we can see that this 
voltage transform or current transform that define this transform impedance or admittance we can see here this impedance is defined by voltage and current admittance again defined by current and voltage but the condition is that both that voltage and current they must relate to same port means for example in this two port network if you want to get transform impedance at port 1 which we can call as z11 so that will be related with voltage and current of same port you cannot take voltage of one port we can write here right? as port number one so i'll write this as port one and here as port two so we will relate voltage and currents of same port to get transform impedance for particular port so i'll write here that suppose we want to get z11 that means transform impedance related to port 1 then from this formula i will require it v1 of s divided by i1 of s as simple as that suppose i want z22 that means transform impedance for port number 2 then only change will be v2 of s divided by i2 of s and so on these things will be clear because it will be coming much regularly so the important condition is the voltage transform means v of s or current transform means i of s which define your transform impedance or admittance they must relate to same port that means either it should be port 1 or port 2 obviously if we are dealing with two port network then this comes this also comes true for one port network also so impedance or admittance at a given port it's called as driving point impedance because at that particular port we have to cal we calculate that impedance or admittance and we have seen this definition in the very first part that pair of terminals which are connected to energy source that means this pair here also there will be some energy source and that is nothing but driving force and so the impedance or admittance at particular port is called as driving point impedance or admittance obviously we will see what is transform impedance for if there is resistance if there is inductor or there is capacitor that we will see in some other video this is just an introduction part so now we will move to transfer function and once we complete that we will see both in details so now let us see what is transfer function for network having two or more ports only so this is applicable for a network which is having two or more ports. that means it is not applicable for one port network now what is transfer function it relates the transform of a quantity it can be voltage or it can be current so transform of a quantity at one particular port to the transform of another quantity at another port so here you have one port and here you have another port so means maybe voltage at this port will be related with current at this port it is also possible or voltage at port number two will be related to voltage at port number two will be connected to voltage at port number one so assuming that we are applying this all to a two port network output quantities let us say that output quantities are v2 of s and i2 of s which i have written here for a two port network this is v2 and i2 and let us assume that the input quantities are v1 of s and i1 of s which are here v1 and i1 all in s domain so if this is your two port network for this two port network you have four types of transfer functions which can be tabulated in this one table now see here there is a term which is called as numerator here there is denominator that means if i want to write equation for g12 now what is g12 g12 is voltage transfer function so let's write the first one so what is this g12 g12 will be called as numerator divided by this denominator so in numerator we have v2 of s so i will write here v2 of s divided by v1 of s that's it that is our voltage transfer function in general this gives us voltage gain in a network 
mainly in BJTs and FETs when we deal with all electronic circuits. We use V2 by V1 as voltage transfer function which gives us gain. Now similarly, I can write all the quantities. For example, Y12 will be I2 upon V1. Then Z12 will be V2 upon I1 because it is numerator divided by denominator. So voltage upon current. And there is alpha 12. Alpha 12 for this it will be numerator is current I2 and denominator is current I1. So I2 divided by I1 will be alpha 12. So we will write all the functions. So you can see admittance transfer function as we know admittance is current upon voltage. So because it is y12 see this 2 will be in numerator so i2 upon v1 this is a way to remember it. Similarly we will write the third one. You can see impedance is nothing but ratio of voltage upon current. So Z12 means V2 because this 2 is later. So V2 divided by I1 will be called as impedance transfer function. And the last one. Current transfer function will be output current upon input current or current at port 2 divided by current at port 1. So it is going to be I2 of S divided by I1 of S. All these quantities will be in S form or S domain. So Y, Z and alpha all will be in S form. So this was all about the introduction part. Now you will wonder that Y12 is possible. Then whether Y21 is possible, yes, it is also possible. So for example, if you want to for some other network, you want to write y21 is equal to it will be i1 of s divided by v2 of s so on so only thing that we need to know is this later part this 2 is the pre previous one and 1 is the later part or later digit that will be in numerator and this will be in denominator so in same way you can write all the functions so that's all about this introduction part and more detailed videos will be coming for this chapter. So stay tuned to Ikeda. So thank you very much guys for watching this video. Please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.